I don't know if it's, you call it a secret, it's sort of done. What would this cost in Austin, do you think? It might be close to five digits. We don't want to live here. Like, I don't trust the cost back home either, but like, I trust them even less here. Beverly Hills of Mexico. I fully get it. I did the same thing. What do we have here, Ross? That's fantastic. The main focus there was just too much on how much money do you make, what do you do, who do you know? Sophie, how do you feel with safety here? It's like we're in the US. Have you noticed any resentment or friction in that from the locals? The city does have a magnetic energy and a vibe. A lot of those problems that you think are problems just kind of go away. Good morning, guys. Here in Mexico City, a city where many Americans have been migrating to for a long time, but there's been a massive influx in the last two to three years. Some have told me they're here because of economic reasons, others because of political policies at home. So today we're gonna to meet up with one of these guys. His name's Ross, he's been here six months from Austin, Texas. Says his quality of life is way better down here than at home. We're gonna get the inside scoop from Ross and see what's so great about living here in Mexico City. Let's do this. This is a beautiful Polanco. We're in Parque Uruguay. So you moved here six months ago from Austin, right? That's right. I've always loved living outside the US. I was in the military, so I lived oh, nice. in Japan, Korea. Okay. I've been traveled all over the world. So it's always been part of my plan to live sure. outside the US. I first came here like roughly 10 years ago. And I would tell American friends at home, I'd say, hey, this is a great city. I, yeah. I, I get it. It's got a bad reputation for being dangerous. And it was more dangerous back then. But I think that, I don't know if it, you call it a secret, is sort of done. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of Americans here now, right? Oh uh, yeah, a lot, tons. And especially COVID. People came here when their jobs went remote. Right. So, you know, cost of living is, goes down a little bit, and in my opinion, quality of life goes way up. Hola. Hello, sir. Hola. When people ask me, I don't even mention the cost, because really it's, like, weather is a really big one. People, friendly people here. Right. Great food. I love the lifestyle, like, not having to own a car. In Austin, you have to have a car, so. And it's, Ubers here are ridiculously cheap. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I spend $3 coming over. Exactly. It is mi amigo. Hola. Marco. Marco? <laughs> si. So you have your own security guard now. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest um, problems, like natural disaster wise, is earthquakes in Mexico City. And we had an earthquake the other day. Wow, nice place. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Sophie. Hi. Nice to meet you. Wow. Beautiful sunset here. I'm sure you've been to Chapultepec Park. It's like right there. Yep. And then from, oh yeah, right over there. From the other side of the condo, we can see Castillo de Chapultepec, the Chapultepec castle. This is amazing. So, okay, what would this cost in Austin, do you think? Oh, might be close to five digits. Like maybe 8,000 a month or something, if you had like right. the view and the, the space. It's cheaper for this than our studio apartment in Austin for 2,000 a month. And then this is like way more space, way nicer oh, wow. for less. <laughs> this is very cool. And this is the office, guest bedroom. Okay. And you offered me this, so thank exactly. you for that. Yeah. Very cool of you guys. This could have been your room. And a lot of people don't think of Mexico City as having those modern skyscrapers, mm -hmm. right? And there's a part of town up there, Santa Fe, right? Where all the, mm. like the new business district is. Yeah, Santa Fe is super rises. modern. It feels like you're in US City, Dallas or that was the best buy before the pandemic. They had to close down and then we got a Walmart. So it's like, you know, it's like we're in the US. This is the master bedroom. Oh, nice. We also have a housekeeper that comes twice a week. And that's normal here though, right? Yeah, yeah. Products will be like around the same price. Like if you want to buy a cell phone or a computer, it's going to be like about the same. Even produce surprisingly isn't that much cheaper than mm -hmm. you can get in the US. But labor is where things are a lot cheaper here. Sophie, how do you feel with safety here in this neighborhood? Because everyone here is Mexico City is super dangerous. Yeah, people will say that if they've never been to Mexico. Uh, obviously, Polanco is very fancy, Beverly Hills of Mexico, so okay. it's pretty safe. I can walk around after even like 8 p.m. It's pretty safe here, 
But if you go to Tepito, which is kind of... Um, it's got a reputation. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a dangerous spot. Slum town. Probably you got to be careful with your belongings and everything. Are you from Austin? Born and raised in South Korea. Oh, okay. Yeah. I moved to the States because of him. Yeah, like three years ago. Two or three what years ago. We, we met when I was stationed in yeah. Korea. But how do you speak so well in three years? Oh. She's been studying longer. <laughs> yeah. she, she studied in She's, Ireland and yeah. New Jersey. Okay. 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 And my part time job is translator, English. Korean oh, that's stuff. amazing. I'm going to study veterinary medicine okay. in Mexico. Why here? Why? That's a really good question. So, first, tuition. Okay. It's how, how much cheaper here than the U.S.? Uh, like 10% like or something. 10%? It's significant. But I mean, 10% of, of the cost. cost. It's like oh, significantly so 90% cheaper. cheaper here. For example, there's a UNAM, UNAM uh -huh. uh, which is Harvard. Okay, Harvard, Harvard and Mexico. Mexico. Okay. And it's almost free. You pay only 50 pesos, which is like $3. Per semester? Or? No, throughout the four years. Wow. Or four, what, four or five years. Three dollars for four years? Yeah, that's what I heard. But I, I think, think it, it was completely, completely it was completely free, and then they and added they that. Changed. We're going to go to what you said, the Rodeo Drive of Mexico? That's right, Masaryk. Okay. Avenida Masaryk, which is like you see... Tesla dealer and Gucci and Rolex and okay. all the fancy stuff. You're talking about how your lifestyle is much better here, your mm -hmm. costs are down. Have you noticed any resentment or friction in that from the locals? Because uh, to sort of have a winning, winning outcome, there has to be a losing outcome, let's say. It's hard to tell, like it might be a lot of, they give you, because Mexicans are famous for being passive, I guess is the word. like. They won't say no to you. They won't tell okay. you how they really feel kind of thing. Because to my face, they've only ever been very welcoming and polite okay. and nice. Okay. But I hear about it from other expats like, like, oh, we're coming in and gentrifying this. And you know, what's interesting. I did a video yesterday with a local here. He lives in Condesa. Uh -huh. He's a Mexican guy. He's lived abroad. Very cool guy. He enjoys it because he likes the international vibe. Mm. He wants to meet people from around the world. Mm -hmm. And for him, it's a, a, it's a net benefit, even if the prices have gone up a bit. Right. But he said some of the old timers in Condesa, where their, their living costs have gone up a lot, but their income hasn't, there's a problem with them. So it really depends who you ask, right. what I've yeah. noticed. And I did, I did the same thing in, in Ukraine when I lived there. It was one fourth the cost of San Francisco. I just failed the startup. I had another business that was paying my bills, uh -huh. barely to live in San Francisco, but I could go to Ukraine and spend one fourth the money and pursue my dream, which was video making, which didn't make any money in the beginning. Right. And so by going there Give and leveraging costs, runway. I could actually create the life I wanted to create. So uh, I fully get it. I did the same thing. Yeah. You know. The Mexicans that I have met yeah. tend to be through in like Roma Condesa area. Sure. And they're they're the same way. Like they, they're glad to have us here. At an energetic level, as kooky as this might sound, this place is way better off, I'll say this neighborhood, uh -huh. than a lot of US cities right now. Oh yeah. Because you, you don't have um, a ton of mentally unstable people walking around. Yeah, I don't know, again, societally, like why that happens in the US, but it's not an issue around here. Right. In this neighborhood. In this neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. To the audience, I want to make this very clear. We're in a neighborhood in a massive city. Obviously, the whole city is not like this. There are slums favelas you're a part of the bubble you're living in let's say and you guys are in a bubble here yeah right very much yeah which is probably taking up three percent of the city or something like that right yeah yeah if that it's a huge footprint in the city massive footprint so you yeah. can have this story here or you could have moved to mexico city and moved to a completely other you know different neighborhood mm -hmm. and your reality and your experience is totally different story those yeah. are the stories that are going to make the news, obviously. Right. Dogs in a park. Yeah. Designer leash. dogs in a park. That's not happening. <laughs> Afghan hounds. Those, those is are that pretty, what that is? Yeah, those are pretty common here, actually. We've seen Afghan a lot of them. Afghan hound? I've never seen one of these. 
we're making a video on Americans living here. Yeah? You're Canadian? Yeah. American? Yep. How do you guys like it? We want to live here. So colorful, cultural, lively, everyone's so happy. Yep, um, love the prices. Happier than home, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Weird, eh? But it's the truth. And the waiters why are so is, Why is that, do you think? I think maybe the simple life, like, I really think that's what it is. Really? Yeah. But here they're not living, I mean, they're living pretty well here, oh, right? Right. But, but you think overall? Yeah. I think the weather also has a big effect on people, the colors too. Yeah. The vibes, I'm telling you, it's the vibes. Guys, thank you. Gracias, senor. So one of our very favorite things in Mexico City is, this is Reforma, like the main yeah, road. Yeah, sure. And it closes on Sunday to cars. Yep. So you can just bike down it, walk down it. It's, it's awesome. Okay, Ross, as a guy that spent a lot of time abroad and now living here, what do you think the U.S. could learn from Mexico? The Mexican family is very important here for sure. Like, and I've seen a lot of the you know street interviews on YouTube where Right. They ask Mexicans, like, what do you not understand about the U.S.? And they always say, I don't understand how when they're 18, they leave the house and they never okay. see their parents again. And okay. It's like family is not really a Well, that might have changed. I think a lot of guys are, a lot of kids are staying home now because of economics. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, it's hard to fully show here on camera or to put into words, but the city does have an energy, a magnetic energy and a vibe and a happiness to it. Of course, there's every story under the sun and not everyone's living their best life, but I gotta say, walking these streets, it's, uh, it's a very pleasurable thing to do. Okay, what do we have here, Ross? We got dos tacos al pastor, which is like a pork that's grilled on the spit. And then we got two chicharron. Here we have a quesadilla. Basically the same thing, just in different forms. So we have all these salsas here. What's the hot one? This one? The green one. <laughs> here we go, quesadilla. That's fantastic. So this is almost like a local Mexican diner, fair to say, something like that? Yeah. yeah, it's like a chain. They got a bunch of locations. Okay. Would these be considered cheap eats? No, I wouldn't say so. Like, the taco puesto, the taco stands, we get tacos for eight pesos. Eight pesos, so, okay. These are like 28, so they're actually kind of expensive. So 28 pesos is $1.50. Is mm -hmm. And that's an expensive one. Okay. Where are you guys taking us? We're heading to Artworks, the independent co-working space here in Mexico City. And they also have an art gallery, so there's local and foreign artists can come here and sell their artwork. I've run a gallery in Toronto called Hashtag Gallery for the okay. past 10 years. Well, I wanted to reopen it in space here as well, so this building kind of let us do that. So where are you from? Toronto. How long have Originally. you been down here? Uh, about a year and a half. January 2021, I came with some friends just to remotely work and make okay. art for three weeks. Okay. Uh, and then COVID obviously messed a lot of those plans up and there was a, a COVID hotel that was put in place for Canada. So if you came back to the country, it would cost $2,000 for three days in a hotel while you waited for your COVID results. Uh, wait, wait, $2,000 for three days in the hotel? Yeah. If you were abroad, is that how that works? If you're outside of Canada, yeah, and you were coming back to the country after a certain date, you had to get your COVID test at the airport. Uh, so you had to put yourself up in a hotel for three days from a list of certain hotels. And the estimated cost is about $2,000, which for me, it was cheaper to stay here for four months than it was to go home. <laughs> I figured if I'm going to be stuck somewhere, I might as well be stuck somewhere warm, not somewhere cold and miserable. So I stuck around in Mexico and then stopped Some... here on my way home and I decided to come back and move here. And... Why did they gou gouge you guys so hard? Um, I have a feeling it's probably the premier of the province and the uh, friends that he has that own hotels, I think is oh, probably. Oh, okay, okay. So let's get <laughs> it people that were lobbying. So, Let's stick to foreigners or those coming yeah. back home. Uh, okay. It was to discourage people from actually just taking joy, joy, uh, joy rides or trips, trips outside the country for fun. 
uh, for two weeks or whatever. So. Jeez. Okay, um, this is very cool. So it's an old building, obviously. Yeah, it's from 1923. Okay, 23. So 100 years old, 1923 is what they said. So the downstairs is the art studio space. This, this floor is uh, the reincarnation of Hashtag Gallery, but in Mexico. We've set it up in a way, so it's kind of a lounge area back here. So it's part, part art gallery, part lounge. Down here is the part of the courtyard that uh, we have access to through the uh, art studio section. Very cool. How has this been received here? Like, are, do you have mostly Americans, Canadians here, or is uh, it? Are you getting a mixture of both? A mixture of both. both. Okay. Like, I have a, a fairly large WhatsApp group that's just like a beer and fun one, so okay. people can like do stuff. There's about 700 people in the group, and I'd say it's probably like a third foreigners, a third locals, and a third people who were here and aren't anymore but want to be part of the fun okay. stuff. Um, oh, this so is we do very have a good mix. Cool. So nice. this is our co-working space. We have two yep. co-work rooms here. We offer free tea, free coffee, free beers. How would you compare the culture here versus the culture in Toronto? Uh, Just like the say, vibe on the streets, the, the people you interact with. I, I would say in Toronto, the main thing is that people are focused on work. Okay. It's literally when you get into a conversation, I find the first thing people ask is, what do you do? Okay. Which, you know, I, I had the gallery for 10 years, but I also worked as a cook part time because doing emerging artists and emerging art stuff, you're selling paintings for like 500 bucks, right? Exactly. You gotta sell a lot of $500 paintings to pay $5,000 in rent. Yeah. Because usually it's a 50 50 split with the artist in general for art. So, the, um, yeah, I just found that the main focus there was just too much on how much money do you make, what do you do, who do you know, and that kind of thing, as opposed to, I guess it was like a working to live rather than living, or living to work rather than working right. to live. I lived abroad for many years, yeah. and it's freeing in the sense that. The culture you're in, you're yeah. not really totally connected with. Their right. problems aren't necessarily your problems. Right. right and right. what's happening at home seem, seems far away when you're living here and you're not really yeah, connected yeah. with it either. Yeah, unless I'm on yeah. Twitter actually trying to follow stuff on and like trending yeah. topics in Ontario, like yeah. I barely even pay attention anymore, to yeah. be honest, which is kind of nice. It's freeing, isn't it's, it? Because you're not bombarded by the newspapers every day being like, you know, the premier did this stupid thing or the premier did this, whatever. It's right, like, right. If it's really big news, you'll see it in the headlines on the international stuff. But yeah. I lived in Taiwan about 10 years ago as well for a year. Okay. And I noticed the exact same thing. It was like a lot of those problems that you think are problems just kind of go away. I came back out and my laptop was just off the front uh, desk. So It was stolen from here. The, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was asking what are the challenges, that's one of them. Thievery can happen, obviously. Yeah, I mean, the biggest, uh, the thing is you just gotta remember you're not in your home country anymore. It's like, like I don't trust the cops back home either, but like, I trust them even less here. If I see them- How, are, home, the they How are the cops here, your experience so far? Uh, during the day, I haven't noticed too much, but at night, it's like, they'll, they'll shake you down, they'll take everything out of your pockets, and if they'll, you're- the, They'll take your phone and money? They'll try, yeah, yeah. I mean, on the, on the, the main streets here? In certain areas, there's certain areas that they kind of do laps, and they kind of look for victims. And usually if you're like, you're talking back and flying with them, there's, yeah, they'll shake So them. in these nice, they we're in Condessa, right? Yeah. Right now, right? But they know most of the money here, they know most of the foreigners are here, so it's so targets they, for them to do. That's a common practice? Uh, especially with drunk, if you're drunk, if people are drunk or high or something, like okay. that, usually they'll, they'll, they'll know, they know certain bars that, that, that people go to, Yeah. and as you're coming out, they'll just nab you on the outside as soon as you get out. The times that I've been pulled over and shaken down, I've not been doing anything, I've just been walking. And shaking and they, down, they, like, they how, how so? Well, they'll just run at you saying, you know, don't they drug us, don't they drug us. Like, where's the drugs? And then they, you know, take everything out of your pockets, they take money off of you, whatever, and then those... Or, or I've had other friends that have gone, taken to the bank machines. The cops will take them to the bank machine. No way. They empty money out of the machine, and they'll take them up to their apartment, take money out of the apartment. And, yeah, in the capital? Yeah. I would think that would happen in the provinces around where... No, this is like, the one that got taken to his apartment was literally in, uh, on Amsterdam, in, in, in Canessa. Okay. He was smoking a cigarette outside of his house. They told him it was not a cigarette, and they said, we're coming in your house. You're giving us some shit. Daytime, it's not <laughs> going to be a problem. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. I okay. don't trust them enough that I wouldn't try it in the day either, but, you know. <laughs> Any other challenges here? We've just been talking about how great it is I mean, the whole di all day long. How, is, how great it is? Yeah, how everything's amazing. I mean, my amazing. biggest challenge, honestly, is like, I live, at, I live in Condessa in a place that doesn't have like a doorman or anything. Yeah. So in order for us to take the garbage out, or to get gas, or to get uh, water, like off the street, you gotta wait till the guy's yelling or ringing the bell or whatever, you gotta be at home at the right time. Okay. The bell going for the garbage can, you might have garbage in your house for four days. Oh, if you forget to take it out for a week and you're like, okay. What if you're at work? Well, that's the problem. Like, now I got a roommate here, we just rented a two bedroom apartment, but like, unless he's at home, when the garbage guy comes by, we're probably not gonna get the garbage taken out, so. And it's not like it's a set time every day. It's, just, it's sometimes it's random. Little weird things like that, okay. but like, you know. Okay, so despite <laughs> those challenges, it's still worth it being here. I think so. I just, I just find it more relaxed, more comfortable to be here. The people are very friendly. 
So foreigners, Mexicans, whomever, you want them here? Of course. Okay. Everybody's welcome. Links down below. Very cool place you got here. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, guys. All right. What did we learn today? We learned uh, you can have a great life here That's coming right. from the States. We learned that the cops are not your friends. Right. Um, but no, really appreciate it, you guys. And I also want to drop your YouTube channel mm -hmm. for your business, but mm -hmm. also you're going to be doing videos, you said, about Mexico City. That's right. Yeah, so, so my handle is just down below. at Ross Zeiger. Yeah, down below. And I'll start one about Mexico City very soon. Okay, awesome. So. Thank you guys for coming along. This is just one look into Mexico City. Check out my other video I did on Mexico City with a local Mexican. We went to all different neighborhoods, um, but many beautiful stories in this massive metropolis. All right, until the next one.